Hey, what's up? This is Kayvon. You're listening to the Break It Down Show. We're about to break it down. All right. And now, the Break It Down Show with John and Pete. We are. We're breaking it down in the swanky Hollywood apartment of Kayvon. Yeah, that's yes. right. So swanky. So swanky, man. <laughs> He's got a robe on. Or janky, whichever way Whatever. you want to go. Right. So a janky. Is that velvet? Yes, <laughs> that is velvet. Hey, so, you know, the funny thing is it took us a minute to set up, but, man, we hit the ground running. Yeah, we've already had so much good conversation. I don't think we'll be able to follow it up at this point. Oh, we're probably we, done. We burned uh, We burned all the good material. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks. <laughs> hey, it's nice. Uh, thanks, 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 thanks a lot. Uh, so one of the things that we were talking about, first of all, I'm going to get to your show Mm -hmm. and we have a lot to talk about there, but we're talking about how you and Pete met. That's right. At South Point Casino. Beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. That's right. That's 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 your hometown though. Yeah. I'm from uh, Nevada, born in Reno, moved to Vegas as a young boy, moved back to Reno for college. So I'm a little Nevada pinball. Wow. Finally made it out to Hollywood, but yeah. um, whenever I go back, it's like hometown advantage and uh, had a great comedy show and yeah. heard about this podcast and said, let's do it. Let's do it, man. Five hours drive later and we're in West Hollywood doing it. That's oh. right. That's right. I used to live in Vegas too. I was the Captain Morgan model in oh. the area. Oh, so whenever nice. Captain Morgan showed up, it was it was me and I had on a you know an overly hot costume. His and- job was to get people to drink rum. Oh, yeah. that's hard. Yeah. In Las Vegas. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> when you're wearing a costume. Yeah. You know, yeah. I love the thing I love about Las Vegas, which is weird that you grew up there because you saw it from the inside. But what, what I love about Las Vegas, for me, I'm, Vegas is a 72 hour thing. Yes. And I arrive in Vegas and I love it. I mm-hmm. love it. I it's love great. all the everything. I walked by one day the, uh, Hands, uh <laughs> entrance, and there was a dude dressed as a leprechaun. He was a midget, yeah, <laughs> and he was full of charisma, and he was high fiving people. Hey, everybody! If you love beer pong the way we love beer pong, come on into Hula Hands. And he's got bikini models walking around handing you stuff, and he's <laughs> high fiving patrons as they walk. It yes. awesome job, perfect. You can't ask for anything maybe. better than that. That's right. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, like you said, Vegas is either a 72 hour town or it's a great place to live for 10, 15, 20 years, but you can't live for 15 years the way you're doing it in 72 in hours. Right. So you gotta pace yourself you for the marathon. That's right. <laughs> Otherwise you end up, you know, there's some pretty bad horror stories for those that yeah. didn't get it right. Did he say horror stories? Horror. He left, oh, horror. It, he left it. I left it in horror. the middle. Uh-huh. Yeah. Horror. Choose yes. your own adventure. Yes. <laughs> yes. And we did. But 72 hours later, here's what I love, is that 72 hours later, I walk by the same Houlihan's and I see that poor, exploited midget <laughs> going, if you love beer pong the way we love beer pong. Mm. And I think to myself, oh, the indignity. <laughs> it's 72 hours later, it's the same guy, the same, same guy. bikini models. He's the still s- high-fiving people. I'm uh-huh. like, the same lines. Yeah. yeah. You poor, exploited bastard. Yep. 92 this people a minute arrive in Vegas. So yeah, you know, ninety two people, ninety two people leaving. It's just a constant rotation. And we have a funny ass fucking comedian who's from there who decided to split. Oh yeah, it's going on there. Split. You gotta because I used to see all the famous comedians that would come into Vegas. Like, mm. well, I want to do that one day, but yeah. there's no entry at that time. I didn't see one an entry level. It's like the bangers are coming through: Jerry Seinfeld, yeah. Ray Romano, right. George Wallace, George Carlin. You're like, I want to do that one day. Well, you got to come to L.A. Else a, to start. You come to L.A. There's tons of little coffee shops where no one's listening, and you get a lot of little three minute horrible sets. Yeah, and you work that stuff out to get better at your craft. Is that specifically what you did? Oh yeah, I, did. I waited till I got to L.A. to start, and I went to the comedy store because I read a book that right. a lot of famous comedians got their start at the comedy store. Sure. So I purposely didn't perform anywhere. People offered me other shows, so no, 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 I have to get my start at the comedy store. Uh-huh. But didn't realize that's a figure of speech. Right? Like, <laughs> they actually performed many other places, and then eventually got their start at right. the store. I was taking it literally, yes. like, no, nah, I can't, I can't. Uh, I can't. I'm, I'm, I got to bust my cherry at, at the comedy at store. the comedy store. So I can say I did. I when yes. that book is written again. In, he got his start at the comedy <laughs> store and then realized he needed to work a lot harder elsewhere. Yes. That's like, I got my start at the, no, you were a harlot and you yeah. were blowing dudes in the 10th grade. <laughs> That's and right. And then you got your start right. at the Tropicana or wherever it was. Yeah. So <laughs> you got your start, your actual start. At the comedy store. Okay. Um, which was great. And then Hollywood is elusive and hard because at the low level... 
a lot of people were more nice to me, like, oh, come do this show, come do that. Then you start landing a few things, and some people kind of give you a cold shoulder. I don't know what that is. Does that Politics. happen that fast? They start pulling Sometimes, away from you like... And yeah, and friends that you like don't like you anymore, but new people are impressed by your talent. And so I don't know. It's constantly like winning over new friends and influencing different people. And it's been a very weird ride. Tell us how you arrived at Kayvon for a stage name. <laughs> well, that's the best part. It's not a stage name. Kayvon is my real name. Yeah. My dad is uh, Middle but, Eastern. So okay. Kayvon's a very common name in uh, where he's from. But you are K-V-O-N. I spelled it like that because right. people are having such a tough time pronouncing it and spelling it. So I just, hey, K-V-O-N. It made it very easy for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, but it's caused even more problems because then people go to book you. If, right. you. if I send you an email, here's how it sounds. I could just say... Hi, my name is Kayvon. I'd love to do a show sometime. But it sounds like this. Yo, dog, my name Kayvon. You gonna put me on that show or what? Man. Man, fuck you. <laughs> so you, the thing is, everybody will have seen your picture, of course, uh, yeah. if they, if they go to our show site and, and that's where they're listening. But if yes. they're just subscribing on iTunes, maybe they didn't see your face. They, they might have to Google Kayvon. All American surfing white dude. That's right. Yes. Surfing Kayvon, bro. Nobody would know. <laughs> but you are Kayvon. And yes. Your, so that your dad is Iranian. Yeah, my dad is Iranian, so he wanted us to have very strict Persian names that we could easily turn American. Right. Right. My brother is Shaheen, but he goes by Sean. All right. I was Kayvon. I could easily have gone by Kevin, but it just never... That didn't uh, stick. It didn't stick. I was just like, yeah. But whenever... So it's so funny. Whenever I go to like uh, like check in at a hotel or uh, to a nightclub, you know, and they're like, what's your name? And I just say, uh, Kevin. Because they look at my ID. I don't want to sit there and have a two-hour podcast discussion yeah. about the origin of my name yes. with some dude at the Hyatt when I'm just trying to get in there and You're sleepy. check in. Yeah, I'm sleepy. So, yeah, Kevin Mosey. And one girl I took with me to a hotel, she's like, oh, this whole time and your name is Kevin? And she was very offended <laughs> that said, you lied to me. You said your name was Kayvon. I go, hey, I've known you for two years. I just didn't want to tell you know Bill behind the counter my real yeah, name. Yeah, didn't want to so, get into it. Didn't want to get into it, so... She was very upset, and I had to smooth it out and prove my real name again. <laughs> it just dawned on me that you live in West Hollywood. You don't live in Westwood. I live in West Hollywood. That's right. That's right. Uh, and uh, I have uh, three gay roommates, and they're not here, so that makes you two able to take their place right now. Oh, <laughs> yes. We just became the two gay roommates. All right. <laughs> That's pretty much what we are everywhere we go. This morning, we were at Asylum Studios, and we yeah. walked in. We're like, hey, we're the two gay dudes. Yeah, we're the- um, anyway. <laughs> And you yeah. have a good radio hey. voice, by the way. Very calm. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I was trying to hold that back and not let Pete on to the fact that I had plans for lunch. Anyway. <laughs> um, so the other thing is, while Pete gives me the blank stare, <laughs> the other thing is you have a, you have a news show. I'm very lucky because I, um, I just landed a news show called Top 30. We do 30 stories in 30 minutes. I'm one of three news anchors. Yeah. And I'm the only male anchor. So it goes girl, guy, girl, guy. I'm the one in the middle just taking stories, just chopping them up and have to make them clear and concise. Yeah. I'd have to take like basically a whole newspaper article, maybe two, and make it into a quick 30 second soundbite that makes a little bit of sense. I didn't hear any of the technical stuff at the end. What I, what I heard was that you are doing a current events three way. Yeah. That's right. You're shouldering the burden. I, like a Mac. I'm trying. I'm trying to do a good job, and uh, the the co-hosts are really good, and they're young. Yeah, they're they're 23, 24 years old. I heard that part too. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the old grandpa on the show. Wow. I'm in my thirties. Yeah. So, wow. so it's so funny because I'm like these. They're good. I gotta. Yeah. Because they when they tell a story, it's very energetic and bubbly. Sure. Today, Hillary Clinton might win. You know, and I'm going. Yeah. The Zika virus is very, so I have to be like, and the Zika virus, you cannot forget, this thing is affecting everybody, starting microcephaly, you don't want that, children born with very small heads. Wow. (laughs) I have to learn to inflect with my voice, because a lot of it is uh, voiceover, they're showing pictures and this, and if you're just, you might pay attention to me if I'm talking to you, but if you're only hearing me, I gotta be like, this could be one of the worst problems in American history if it comes here. We hope it doesn't. You know, like yeah, trying to make it sound good but not cheesy at the same time. Well, has that informed your act on stage? You know what? What it has done for my act is every day I'm getting these news stories and have to turn them right around and yeah. add a joke or two. Right. 
And my it's made your act punchier. My act has become like a comfort blanket, like a mm. like a <laughs> like a little kid. Like, oh, yeah. I can't wait to slip into my act tonight and just yes. do these old twenty year old jokes that I wrote. When, <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> like some of those jokes that I used to be nervous to deliver on stage. I'm like, well, at least I know these jokes. Yeah, I can do these. Like the back of my hand, it's these new news stories that are throwing me a curveball right now. Wow, yeah. and, and it's it's helped because now the pressure is off my stand up. It's like someone took all those load of you know, rocks on my stand up and just moved it over to this show. Sure. And my stand up is like flying nice and pretty and everything. That sounds like a great gig, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. We wake up at four in the morning. We're in makeup by four thirty. Wow. We're sitting down at the table around five, five fifteen. Yeah. Uh reading these stories for the very first time. Four or five of them, and then we go downstairs and put them on tape. And we're talking about a broadcast show and you do this early, early, early in yes. the day so that they they, they can, can get it broadcast out broadcast it. Yeah, so then we do, then we go back to the writing room, then we come back and go on tape with 10 more stories, then we go back to the writing room and come back with the final 16 stories, or whatever the math might end up wow. being. That's how we get to 30. Right. And then those editors are like trying so hard. So if you see a mistake on the show, it's not because we're dumb or stupid, it's because they have literally like 40 minutes to take everything we just did, add a bunch of photos and shoot it off to like the You studio. have to be one take Jake on this show. Pretty much, like uh, sometimes the uh, the vice president of programming will come in for the whole Fox division and be like, "Get it right." You're like, "Oh, yes, sir, yes, yes sir. sir." Right and on. Then, and when someone tells you, like they're watching you, you tend to mess up more. Mm. Right. <laughs> yes. So you're like, "All right," and you you got to be able to rise to the occasion or take a foot. So in the that's butt. a lot of pressure. You got to oh. write at a lot at a much faster speed than yeah. you have in the past. Right. Does that leave you much energy for your uh, your regular com- comedy act? Not my, I try not taking it because this is a six week gig. So right. I'm taking my stand up a little, little break. But if anyone offers me a gig, I still say yes. I'm just not out emailing, hunting right. for him. And the funny thing is, once you land something like that, the offers are coming faster now. Right. And, and I, like one guy's, will you come do my room in San Diego? Yes. It's a sold out room. Blah, 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 and I've done it before. I love the room, but I'm like, should I drive to San Diego after already doing a 12 hour day? And wake up at four in the morning the next come, day. Yeah. And so. Made it happen. Yes. The yeah. answer is the answer yes. Because yes. yes. this show is going to end eventually, mm-hmm. and you need to maintain all those relationships because those comics are always going to be there for you. They're your family kind of thing. Well, the next guy on the list, blow your name, that guy says yes. He says yes right. every time. Yes. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. You can't be the guy who doesn't say yes some, right. sometimes. Yeah. You know. And so you just be yes man and you know whatever it takes, sleep in the car as you're rolling down there or sure. something. Yeah. Yep. As that, you're rolling that's down. That's what's going to make these automatic driving cars nice. You can, oh, like, can't just, wait. Like, I don't need the drive. Comedy's going to be so much better when cars just drive themselves. Yes. Oh, yeah. We can work on our little riding. Comedians will be rested. Yeah. yeah. We'll be yeah. just making fun of each other the whole ride. Oh, man. <laughs> that would you be know, awesome. so we are coming at this uh, interview today. I, we don't usually call them interviews. We're just coming at this session today mm-hmm. with, uh, I mean, we're fans of yours. We we dig your comedy, but man, that just notched up my level of respect. You're out here working. I'm out here working. You're I'm, grinding. I will give you a sneak peek of a story that is airing in ten hours or so that I wrote myself, and it's about the Olympics because everyone's getting in the spirit of the Olympics. I would think. Yes. It's in August. I didn't know. I'm learning so much, by the way, just being on the show. August fifth is the Olympics. Man, yeah, you're going to be a current events hound. Yeah, people are going to be calling me going, hey. You're going to do a lot of news jokes. Who's doing Javelin again? You're like, yeah, hang on. Here, let me break this down for you. It's like there's going to be a Tonight Show monologue every day when when anyone just shows up at the comedy store. Yeah. Well, so here's what I wrote, and this is something you got to be careful because it's news. Right. And news is not used to having a lot of jokes. Right. But you're trying to slip jokes. It's like trying to get kids make to make it still be entertaining. You got to make kids eat their vegetables. That's you got to right. slide the spinach in between like their favorite hot yes. dog meat or whatever the heck it is. So, uh, so this is make, this is keeping me sharp. So I wrote, uh, for the first time ever, a team made up entirely of refugees will be heading to Brazil to compete in the Olympics. Treated exactly like everyone else, they will be welcomed with open arms, live in the Olympic Village, and be a symbol of hope. Now, I don't know if you can gamble on the Olympics, but I'm definitely putting my money on the refugees because when it comes to running, jumping, yes. swimming, <laughs> these guys got it on lock. Yes. Cheer, cheer, so yeah, cheer for the refugees, and we'll be back with more in 30 seconds. Yes. Man, <laughs> yeah. that's nice. The, the thing is, you d- you got all the relevant points of the story across. Mm-hmm. You entertained us a little bit. Yeah. We got to have a chuckle about it, yeah. and you created uh, you created seriousness and levity, yeah, and a nice balance, and then a conversation, yeah, 
And and um, the thing is, you can't be negative. Like we know they can run, jump, and swim, don't yeah. we? Because that's a different tone. Sure. But if you're like, yo, I'm rooting for the refugees. Running, jumping, swimming. Yeah. Come on, these guys right. got it. Right. Go refugee. And you there's get- still room for you guys to have conversation afterwards too. Right. Because right. like, what do the chicks should say? And disappearing. That's a new event they've got. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. Awesome, right? Yeah, I wrote this for her. She ends up saying, you know what? You're not kidding. The team is composed of a girl from Syria who saved herself after a raft she was on started sinking. She swam all the way to Greece. Oh. And that's how we won. ended the story. And isn't that a beautiful way? Yes. Right. To You're end celebrating story? somebody's triumph of yes. life and, mm-hmm. yeah, that's all right, man. So it's been very, that's just, I that's just wanted to it. do that for you guys because uh, yeah. it's a podcast. Well, we got the scoop. We got the scoop. Scoopage. <laughs> so yeah. what about your long-term uh, aspirations with this gig? I mean, you know, you're going to take the gig as the gig as comes. It's, yeah. But you, if you, it's a successful as we think it's going to be. Beggars can't be choosers, but when I first got into comedy, people said, what do you want to be? What do you want to, I said, I would love to just be a newscaster that's funny. Yeah. yeah. And my career went all over the board, cruise ships and the Royal sure. Caribbean seas and uh down to the chuckle huts and the little <laughs> yes. you know runs that you'd never want to do with crunchy carpet in the motel sixes. Mm-hmm. And and it somehow wound back up here for the time being on this show. So I'm like, wow, 10 years later that's kind of what I put out there. Yeah. But I I thought that was long since forgotten. No, Did you cross the 10 year mark just now? Yeah, I crossed the 10 year mark a month and a half ago. Wow. So I've been like, that's it. You're in. Honestly, people told me when I first started, they're like, it's going to take 10 years. Right. I go, nah, 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 nah. Not me. I'm a fast learner. Yeah, I right. do this and that. And I just put my head down and I got little signs of like little TV spot here, a little that, but nothing really clicking. And just this year, whoever told me that 10 year thing was onto something yeah. because I landed a um, MTV show. I landed a Fox stand-up comedy show and then this news show, and now it's like all kind of slowly coming together. Slowly coming together, and hopefully a big avalanche is coming. I don't know about sure. it. Sure. <laughs> wow. Kevin Hart, you know, he's doing like what yeah. thirty movies this year. Twenty next. Twenty-two movies. <laughs> it's actually a hologram of him that he <laughs> hires out. You <laughs> exactly. Know? We actually we heard the very same thing. We hear this all the time. We talk to people from all walks of life and all all disciplines. But we talked to a uh, a movie maker yesterday, and he's like, "Yeah, I got this great, incredible start." Didn't matter. Ten years later is when I really broke through, and I was really, you know, doing it. So it's uh, uh it just the it's what it takes. Ten years. It's when you get your legs under you. It's when yeah. everybody can take you seriously. Yeah. It's when everybody knows you're in it to stay. And you actually have confidence. Yeah. Right. And yeah. another thing is you have what I call like a like a healthy. You can't f- fake ten years. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You can have seven good ones, but you can't fake ten. Yeah. And you have a healthy level of um, I say I have a healthy level of disrespect. Sure. <laughs> I watch some TV programs like, I could have delivered that line better. Yeah. And But before Fuck you're like, oh, dude. everyone's better than me because they're on TV and I'm not. But right. once you're not on TV, but you're like, now that, I know I could have done a good job with that. You know, give me that job. I, I, let me show them what I could do. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes you're wrong, but hopefully you're You right. also need to get knocked on your butt a couple of times so you can know that, hey, all I've got to do is get up and keep doing what I do. Yes. I'm going to weather this storm because... Mm-hmm. This is what we do, you know, and this is yeah. how, and you keep going. Those that you gotta can't get weather. knocked on your butt. Uh, in <laughs> comedian speak, you gotta go up and eat a bag of dicks. Yeah. Yes. I just love that saying. Oh, I just, dude, oh, man, it's so I funny. Went in there that, and I ate a bag of dicks. No, so, no they don't. Even, comedians are so like in tune with each other now. They're like, yeah. how was your set last night? Bag of dicks. Ah, yeah. Like yeah. they <laughs> shortened. <laughs> They've just been shortened. Yeah. Pretty soon it's gonna be a BOD. Yeah, ah, you got a little BOD. Yeah. yeah. Took a L. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's, but that's it. Yeah. You eat a bag of dicks. Eat a bag of dicks. I'm just going to say bag of dicks now. Like they've ever come in a bag. <laughs> well, that's the thing is that now I'm like, well, I've never seen him in a bag. Has mine ever been in a Did bag? Did you bring your own bag? Because if not, you have to buy one. Yeah. yeah. You, you need to go to Asia to get a bag of dicks. I yes. think it sounds like something they would have in a in, little. In a shipping container. <laughs> We've got a bunch of dicks. Hang it, hanging in the window. There's yeah. like the row of ducks bag and of then dicks. there's bags of dicks. Right. Can I get, a, can I get like two boxes? No box. Only bag. Only bag. Only like, bag of dicks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> one for 10 or two for 20. Well, you yeah. guys, you guys are from the Bay Area. I went to a Chinese, uh, like those shops yeah. where they have like all the medicines and it's all just powdered or pickled animal parts. Right. Yes. It's like this. And a, you don't know if it's really that no. animal part, if it's a powder. You don't know what it is. Yeah. It's a powdered deer penis. antler for your, you know, yeah. make you strong. Everything makes your dick bigger. Everything. <laughs> that's, what, that's what they said. They'd be like, this right here is a tiger uh, penis. 
it's for your heart, um, for your skin cells, and make you strong. <laughs> like every, <laughs> like everything somehow got back yes. to making you it strong. It all comes back yeah. to the virility. Like those Chinese are really like they must have some dicks over there. Like they they're do. all hard walking around. Yes, <laughs> because they have a billion of them. Yes, a billion dicks. <laughs> I don't think anybody has has ever said on any broadcast anything. Boy, those Chinese, they must have some dicks over there. <laughs> I think We're this breaking is new a first. Ground. That's right. <laughs> I used to work with this Iranian dude. His name was, God only knows what his fucking name was. We called him Johnny. Yeah. Johnny used to, he, we, we worked in a bar and he always used to drink cranberry juice. And I said, what are you drinking, Johnny? Oh, cranberry juice, man. It's good for your dick. So now whenever I see cranberry juice, I think about Johnny. If you're listening, Johnny. Johnny, did you have a bladder infection? Right. Yes. <laughs> a little UTI. Yeah. Poor Johnny. Poor so, Johnny. you know. It's good for your good dick. For, good for, for your dick. dick. Yes. Everything. Everything is comes, come, always comes back. Come back. They got one thing on their mind. In my stand up, I talk about the Persian outfit, which is a v neck shirt, which is so low. It's basically like an arrow pointing down. <laughs> and you can't help it, ladies. Your eyes are going to naturally be drawn yes. down. But if your eyes go too far down, they've thought of that too. Ugly alligator shoes bring your eyes up again. And now you're stuck in the middle yeah. where you belong. <laughs> yes. Focused in the center yeah, where focused. you belong. <laughs> keep your eyes, keep yes. your eyes here. Here, okay, <laughs> right here, right in the right on the goods, <laughs> yes, the crotchal area. If you like the show, and you know you do, send us some pictures and movies. Don't do that. Support the show. There are three ways you can support us. Number one, go to iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you listen to podcasts and leave a five star rating and review. It helps with the show metrics and it helps us get better placement. Number two, visit our website www.breakitdownshow.com. We've got an Amazon and an eBay link. Same Amazon, same eBay, you know and love, but they give us a little kickback when you get to their site from ours. And number three, leave comments about the shows that you like. We want to know what you think, how you feel. Tell us how to make the show better. We greatly appreciate it. Now back to the show. We like boobies. So uh, growing up in Vegas and being a Persian-American, uh, yes. were there many of you? Did you have a community? No, no, no community. Oh wow! That's why I'm. Was there when you were growing up? Was there like a restaurant? Is there any place to get good kebab in Vegas? When you well, were first a of all, I from the till the age of ten, I'm in Reno, so there was no place. At oh home. yeah. And then at the age of eleven, I was so busy with Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, we weren't trying to do anything ethnic. And then once I got to L.A., people were like, "No, you're Persian. You got to learn about all this." And I right. started really, you know, sinking my teeth into the culture, doing stand-up comedy shows for them because they have money, they're willing to pay. Yeah. Mm. You know the typical. Wait. They have money. They have money. And they're willing, and they're to, willing pay? to pay. That's okay. the big, See, for the young comics out there, you know that these comedy clubs, they'll try to pay you in chicken wings. Right. Uh-huh. Or they're like, hey, you know, it's a two drink discount. If you come perform here, we'll give you half price on some beer. You're like, I don't get money. Wait, I'm still giving you money. <laughs> I'm still giving you money. The Persians like, you come to our show. We are going to give you, I don't know, $400. And you're like a beginner. You're like, yeah, yes. I'll 400. Take that. That's like, you know, lots of chicken wings worth of value right there so what do you on the (laughs) on the persian side do you get because you are you look like a white dude yes i don't get persian at all unless i bring it up first so you have to bring it up first yes uh, and i only bring it up if like let's say i'm like and then they're like oh he's okay yeah yeah which i here's what i found this is the weird thing about america this is for you um if i go up and do my set and don't say i'm persian some people get a little uncomfortable of some of the jokes about, oh, you did a joke about a Mexican guy or about a black guy. Right. But if I go up and do my Persian stuff, then I launch into the Mexican and the Indian joke and the black joke. They're falling out of their it's chair okay laughing. It's okay because you're brown. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's brown. He's all right. Which the material is the exact same. So my question to society is, yes, are you the racist? Right. Who's the hypocrite? Not, who's the hypocrite? Who's the racist for not letting the white guy just tell the same joke? But now that you know I'm Persian, now it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the joke is fine either way. So I always stick up for minority and majority rights and just say, hey, it's comedy. You should be allowed to laugh about every culture. It's, it takes a biracial guy to stick up for minority and majority yes. rights. Yes, I'm yeah. right in the middle. Yeah. Wow. I'm in the middle. But I do, I, I just think it's crazy because, uh, uh, and I hate when people also, here's a problem. I hate when people come up after I do some jokes and go, I really loved your racist jokes. No. I'm like, those, <laughs> Those were not racist that's, jokes. That's, that's a dog whistle. Yeah. That's a dog whistle. Yeah, They're yeah. like, hey, it's okay over hey, here. Hey, man. 
oh, your racist jokes have me really going. I'm like, yes. eh. Like, I do a joke, like, how come black dudes say we love booty? I think everybody loves booty. It's kind of like a guy thing, not a racial thing. I don't see white guys walking around, no booty for me. <laughs> Just like a nice flat butt. That's what I'm looking for. And one guy's like, dude, those racist jokes, those are the bomb. Those are, keep doing the racist jokes. And I'm like, now you took it too far. If these are kind of fans, that joke is attracting, I don't know what's going on here. Yeah. People hear what they want to hear, I guess. Yeah. Wow. wow. That was a more, that was a unity joke, actually, because I was saying we all love booty. We're all together on loving booty. If I can't spank you, no thank you. Yes. No ass, I'll pass. <laughs> yes. This is a, this is a man-made belief system. These are, these are t-shirts. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm hearing t-shirts. Let's man. do it. The uh, break it down show and on the back. Uh huh. Yeah. If I can't spank you, no thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best thing I've heard in a long time. We did like 11 shows yesterday. Oh my God. Not really. So many shows. We did four shows yesterday. Yeah, four shows. Five, it's five shows. Yesterday. Five shows total. Lots yeah. of comedians or lots of entertainers. No, 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 no comedians. No comedians Filmmakers, yesterday. writers. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of pressure for me. One guy who's in touch with God, directly yeah. in touch with God. But anyway, you know, my yeah, the reason that I say this is because uh, we had at the end of the day we went, man, that was a really long day, and we got a lot of great content. Yeah. Yep. Not, and we did. We got a lot of superb content. Not one thing, though, as good as, if I can't spank you, no, no thank, thank you. you. <laughs> no ass, I'll pass. I'll pass. Wow. Not into it. <laughs> that's, that's great. If you got a cracker butt, I can have this gut. <laughs> <laughs> a cracker butt. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's nice. It goes on the front and the back, too. Yep. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. A cracker butt. <laughs> cracker so butt. that was good right off the top of your head. Ah, you See? know, I got lucky. <laughs> I got lucky. <laughs> if if your show though takes off, right now your show's in twenty six markets. Twenty six markets, twice yeah. a day in L.A. and New York, which is the important one. Because yeah. now I'm gonna call my agent and be like, "Hello, people have a chance to see me twice a day. So if we go set up a show in Caroline's. Yeah, at least it's like the guy, and it's five days a week. Wow, not many. That's comics, a lot of exposure. Not many comics have a chance to be on in TV on every home in Manhattan five days a week. Sure, five days a week. Twice a day yes. in the two biggest markets in the United States. In the United States. So, go, 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 Fuck, go. You are right. a bona fide celebrity. I call myself a celeb barely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm as close as you can get without actually being, being there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, America, he does have a swanky Hollywood apartment. Right, and a robe. That's yes. right. Very nice. This Very robe. Luxurious. I like to smoke my pipe in this robe. Uh -huh. Did you Did you hear... They're selling the Playboy Mansion. Yes, an I did hear that. offer has been made for two hundred million dollars. Somebody made an offer. Yes, the guy you, who but owns you gotta let the Hef Twinkie. Live there? You got to let Hef live there till he dies. Hef is ninety. Yeah, so I'm. I do it in a year or two. I'd yeah. do it. it I I'd, if it was ten years, I'd be like, okay, two hundred million. Two hundred million is a lot. That's now a lot it's of his dough. neighbor. It's Hef's neighbor, and oh. the guy owns. He's the he owns Twinkies. Okay, right. So. It's going to be even more of a party now. Yeah. He wants to build a tunnel between the two. Oh, yeah. You can have hot girls, Twinkies. That's, Maybe uh, like a, uh, you know what? I'm imagining like a Lexan clear tunnel through the grotto. That'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. Right into the mansion. From mansion to mansion. Twinkies. <laughs> Twinkies. Naked girls. Well, if there's a tunnel. <laughs> grotto. And it's a Twinkie guy. All of it. Filled with foam. Uh, foam party down there because it's Twinkies. And Twinkies that's right. are filled with cream. That's right, right, right. Yes. I'll say. Yeah. And, and those photos is like. I hope that's Twinkie filling on everybody's yes. face at that party. Yeah. Sure, it's it is. It's gonna be balling. Yeah. <laughs> so. ballin'. But if I'm that guy and it's two million, two hundred million, two hundred million bucks, and the condition is you gotta let Hef live there. All right, fine. I got a condition too. Motherfucker's gotta have breakfast with me. Yeah. Yes. It's like, all right, I'm letting you live here, Hef. Yeah. We're gonna eat some eggs, brother. That's right. Yeah. What's yeah. up? Tell me some stories. Tell me some stories. <laughs> yeah. Yes. This guy's got stories from the forties. Yeah. Right. He could very well say, you know what? I'm the first white dude to fuck black chick. Yeah. <laughs> and how <laughs> legally, can you disbelieve legally. him? How can you legally. disbelieve him? You're like, right. he's half. He must be the first. And when you have kid. breakfast at the Playboy Mansion, like biscuits and gravy's got a different meaning. Oh, yeah. You right. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, Anything like, and gravy. Yeah. <laughs> like, could you imagine him telling you a story about like when he lost his virginity in the 30s? Yeah, right. when he lost his yeah. virginity to like Mae West. <laughs> right. And everything that you say has to be, it's like biscuits. And gravy. Mm. <laughs> hire hey, a guy for that. Oh, we're having some. Uh, we're having chicken fried steak. And gravy. gravy. Yeah. Yes. And he this can tell you about Marilyn Monroe. The, the and all of them. All, all of them. Who, yeah. Yeah. I, I could say anybody, and the girl has no chance. Like. Yeah. 
you've you've been done. You know, <laughs> that's it. Check. So your show is going for six weeks, and then they look at expanding. the ratings. They yeah. look at all the stuff that's out of my power. So I'm just trying right. to do the best job I can to keep my job. In How many weeks case? are you in? Yeah, uh, we're on week number three right now. All right, so we still have a chance. We're in the home stretch, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Tune in. Get your Nielsen boxes. Do they still have Nielsen boxes? How do they even count that shit? It's well, got to be through the cable box now, right? Can't I know, I know, because they don't need like what two hundred thousand families across America to tune book. in with a log. Yeah, they need to just figure out based on like how much yeah, bandwidth is getting sucked from, out. Sure, but that's yeah. who's watching. So anyway, if you're listening and you have a Nielsen box, I will blow everybody <laughs> under, <laughs> under the table, low yes. key, do whatever right. you uh-huh. want. Just find me on Facebook.com/slash Cavon Comedy and you name your price. Yes, two hundred million dollar Twinkie fund. Yeah, see. Watching the show make you strong. Yeah, make you <laughs> yes. strong. You know what? A show watching good for your dick. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. If you watch dick. the show, you'll be strong. Yes. So, but yeah, and that that <clears throat> that job was cool because um, I sent in an audition tape for a show called Laughs on Fox. Mm. Laughs is a comedy show that airs opposite of Saturday Night Live. And when you get bored of Saturday Night Live, you flip down two channels. You're watching Laughs on Fox, and they're like, "No, we're full. We're full." I go, "Well, please take a look," and I sent a tape. And they looked at it, they go, mm, send another one, send another one. They go, you're on the show. And so I like overcame two of j- obstacles before I wow. got to the yes. See, that's what the 10 years will do to you. Yeah. The 10 years will go, hey, no, listen. Right. I'm serious. And I had a healthy level. I'm like, I'm seeing who's on the show. Right. I can definitely be part of this crew. Yeah. Right. I belong here. So then I sent that. And then I got on the show and I go, hey, who hosts the show? And they go, oh, this girl hosts the show. I go, if you ever need a side host, I'm here in case something were to happen. She were to fall down some stairs mysteriously in yeah. the back room where we're all getting ready. Right. And they're like, no, that's her job. Okay, well, I do love hosting. Here's a video just so you can see what I'm capable of. And they hit me up three months later and go, not this show. but we got a hosting gig for you? And they sent me on that audition. That's so the other thing that we hear time and again. Yeah. You go into an audition. You do right. your thing and you're like, man, I didn't get it. And you're mm-hmm. disappointed because it didn't happen for you. And then a couple months later, you get that call. Like, you know what? Your name's been bandied around the office because when we saw you, we were like, not this. Right. But let's hang on to that. Yes. Because right. yes. Kayvon's going to be for something, not this. Right. But something. And that's why you got to stay in the ring. Don't get too discouraged. That's right. Yep. Because someone could be looking for something for and you. And there's somebody else who's out there and they're having coffee with somebody and going, yeah, we're casting this new show. Are you really? I, You know what? Hold on. Let me send you a link because we got this audition tape from this right. guy came on. We were just waiting on the thing for him. Yeah. So. And then stand-up is so much more freeing, like I said. Once you get yeah. done with all this filming and taping and this, you just get there and you're just like, what jokes should I do? Who cares? I got. Can you to- imagine you're in a position now where stand-up is freeing? Yes. And it wasn't like that for the last eight years. Eight years, stand up was the harrowing thing. Yeah. And I don't know, going to the gym or the beach was freeing. Now stand up, it's great because that's why you see celebs so comfortable on stage. Yeah. Because there's no one going to fire them tonight. Right. There's no vice president of programming going, what did you just say? You know, yeah. it's just. That's cool. Jay Leno at the comedy store on Sunday nights, yeah, right? It's just, just like he can do whatever he wants. Yeah. Who, who's going to fire him? Yep. Yep. And I would love to meet him too. Um, I've met so many comedy celebs. It's so fun to meet your idols and stuff sure. doing this. I met Jay um, a couple times, but I always want to get on his show and then it ended before I could get on there. Yeah. Now I got to go try to ki- kiss Jimmy Fallon's butt and get on his show. Yeah, on the other side of the God, country. But it's a good so thing good, you're though. in that yeah. market twice a day. Hey, yeah. Jimmy Fallon, I'm on your TV screen twice That's a right. day. Twice a day. For all we know, what time is it right now? He could be watching that shit right now. Yeah, he yeah. really actually he could be. In fact, we should be watching it. Oh, no, 4.30. We got time. Or at 11. That's on. So, yeah, there you yeah. go. So what? that's it? Well, that's what time you're on in New York, 4.30 and 11? Uh, pretty sure, yeah. Wow. And, which is great because you get the 4.30 people are like stay at home and family oriented. Some kids are getting home from high school around then. And then 11 is all our age generation that goes out parties on the weekends and they might buy a ticket to come see me at Caroline's or yeah gotham or what who knows so right. it's so hard to get a good comedy club gig when you when you don't have tv credits right you're just asking for like weekday five minute guest spots but to be able to go on a headline a weekend in all these towns that's my goal i think it's gonna gonna maybe happen now you know it blows me away that you're that you're saying hey i'm gonna you know go go do a headline tour because now i have a tv gig because mm-hmm. i'm not buttering you up although i would in this swanky Hollywood apartment. <laughs> um, <laughs> Who's to say he's not buttered up already? That's yes. true. That's true. That's Vaseline. I can't believe gravy. it's not butter. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> but you fucking make us laugh. Yeah. You're headline He's quality. <laughs> Who's not hiring you as a headliner? That's what I want to know. Let's find them. What a bunch of dumbasses. Around. He's got 10 years, people. Yeah. <laughs> Put them up. Put them up up front. The great thing about uh, comedy and the bad thing as well, I guess, is uh, you can work as hard as you want. Or as little as you want. Yeah. So there are people who could say, I've been doing comedy eight years, but w- at what intensity? Right. And how much writing and rewriting and yeah. editing? I've been going up once a, once a month for eight years. You know what helped my comedy the most? Mm. When I started learning how to edit on the computer. Uh huh. Because I'd throw my video on there to put my name in the beginning and my email at the end to yeah. send it to bookers. Sure. You know, maybe I'll take out that um in the middle yeah we'll cut that out well yeah. now i remember now i also remember don't say um on stage so you have less to edit right. next time and then you're like oh why did i do that look with my face it teaches no, the, you how to tighten it just teaches you what to get rid of yeah. and keep the big chunks of gold and throw away all the sand and uh now i've got like what i think is a pretty dense valuable well yeah comedy if, set. if you get say ten thousand words to give to an audience mm-hmm. 150 of them shouldn't be um or really or very right all these bullshit words or the f word i yeah. hate when people like, if you go do a four minute guest set, I've seen comics like, fucking, so fucking, my dad fucking, he, my dad's fucking crazy. My dad fucking, uh, he came home one day and fucking, now you just said it six times in five seconds. Right. Extrapolate that out for the whole day. Do you really say the F, do you, I mean, people say, I'm just trying to be myself up there. Do you really say the F word 30,000 times a day? I don't think you do. Yeah. So make your five minute act. More Plus, you natural. work at Home Depot. <laughs> so why? In the hammer section. Right. How you gonna- ow, fucking, <laughs> fucking, ow, fucking, <laughs> fucking. <laughs> no, but you're right, though. Those those 250 fuckings, say 10% of them, 225 of them, know why they're in there. Right. Every word's important. Mm-hmm. You really have a professional set. That could have been three good jokes. That could have been three good jokes. Or you could have connected with the audience in some other way. You could have done anything. Yeah. yeah. But you can't do any of it if it's just a it's word that clogged is. Clogged up. Yeah. 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 Yeah, people only have so much bandwidth with their ears, and you yes. gotta just stream them. That's why the Jerry Seinfeld is so effective. Is like his joke streams clearly into your ear. Boom. Yeah. Well, and silence is powerful, and you know this. I mean, yeah. Just well, you gotta get quiet. comfortable in the mm-hmm. silence. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We find the same thing here. We actually have a, a an outtake. We don't put it out, but there's an outtake of uh, one of our guests who's very colloquial when he talks, and it's when you just take all his stuff out. Mm. It is. It's. It's. Weird because it's, it's got the, the, the you know it's all these things that are in there right, that right. just sets you way off your center <laughs> and it's hilarious but it lets you see just how much time you waste with extra words that you don't need totally filler yeah yeah so if you if you edit your stuff you're gonna be like don't do that don't do this and editing has been a huge thing and I it, it's exciting because then I start getting stuff off TV and editing it quicker my big mm-hmm. push um so I was doing stand up for a while and. <clears throat> People started writing because you you can only tour so hard. You can only go to San Fran and then Atlanta and then Montana and then Texas. By the time you look up again, people in San Fran are like, "When are you coming back here?" It's been a year or two. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so some big people, country. Some people were writing me, "Do you still do stand up?" And this wow. is at year eight. Wow. I'm thinking I've never been funnier, and now and they're are... asking, and I go, "Yeah, I do." They go, "Oh, really? I was just wondering because I don't see and." I, I go, that's a big problem. Yeah. So I decided to take it to the internet and I was anything funny I was doing or shooting or clips and put one joke or one sketch online a week. And I'm proud to say that for the last two years, I've done one funny video a week for like the whole two years. And that's a hundred funny videos. And yeah. nobody has asked, do you still do comedy in the last two yeah, years? That's which good. Is nice. That's good feedback. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and huh. then they start passing them around. One of them got, um, it's cool. It took off and it's fun to watch. 4,000 people click share on it. Nice. And it got seen by 130,000 people that I don't know from all over. And I was like, oh, cool. It's that like, is a great feeling. It's mini viral. There's people who have like a picture, like a, you know, grandma scared the cat and that gets 10 million views. So I'm yeah. in awe. I'm like, John's jealous. wife's got a viral video. No way. Yeah. Million plus hits. It was like million five now last time. Three million. Wow. Oh, yeah. See yeah, we had a uh, friend of ours. My my sons are baseball players, and when my kid was in little league, we had a friend of ours, friend of my son, a kid my son grew up with, who was a home run hitter, and he was right. getting intentionally walked. Oh, and uh, the pitcher didn't quite know what exactly that was. He had never been called upon to walk a kid intentionally, so he was <laughs> like, "Coach, what do I?" and the umpire was like dude there's rules around how you have to do this you got to do it right Mm -hmm. so he's trying to coach the catcher 
You have to start off behind the plate mm-hmm. and then go over there and catch the ball. Right. And meanwhile, the kid's like, oh, I just got to throw four balls. Oh, okay. And he just floats one high, but in the same zip code as the plate. Yeah. And our kid hits the ball down the mountain like two miles. Yeah. <laughs> and it ends up being a walk-off home run wow. from an intentional walk. Wow. Because the fact that it was a home run scored three runs, which... Exceeded the ten run rule, et cetera, oh, et cetera. Wow. So it ended up being a walk off home run from That's amazing. an yeah. intentional walk. I gotta see that now. Three see? million. Yeah, I've always so, had that idea because I played baseball a little bit. I was like, if someone's throwing, first of all, I was not a home run hitter, so no one was giving me this opportunity. <laughs> but I was like, just jump and hit it. Like yeah. everyone wants to do that. This <laughs> yeah. kid actually did it. He actually did it. Yeah. That's cool. It's funny because his wife says, "You know, you can hit that," and it's like you can hear my wife too. Yeah. She's like. You know, wow. she's, yeah. and we're like, Your wife's a great coach. Don't, yes. What are you talking she's about? Their coach. kid, you, you want to do this. They're kids. Yeah. Don't encourage them to, they're just playing baseball. But you know be- what? Everybody has always wanted to do that. It became the most awesome day ever. Yeah. And now you got 3.5 million. See, now my 130,000 view video means nothing in this room. <laughs> so <laughs> the lesson here, Kayvon, is that if you want three and a half million hits, what you have to do is exploit children. Yes. That's what I will do. Yeah. I've tried that though. Because I did a comedy. Okay. <laughs> All right. So thanks. All right. Well, thank you guys. Don't and... go. Hey, wait. Let me explain. <laughs> um, I do comedy shows for the Persian crowd, and they always bring their kids. Yeah. Sure. And we're at this big ballroom, which is a night of dancing and entertainment and poetry. And I'm the comedian. And these kids were floating balloons in the front row. Strategically, like wherever I would walk, you'd see the kids walk. But the balloons were always in front of my face. And I was like, you know, does anyone know these kids? And no parents were coming up to claim them. And totally ruining my show. But yeah. luckily the camera was rolling. And we got some of the funniest footage of me like, give me this balloon. The kid starts crying. I go, don't cry. Why are you crying? I'm going to give it back. You know what? And I tie the balloon to the mic stand. And, and you hear oh, him go, man. give it back. Give it back. <laughs> and, and I posted that. And that one got a lot of views. Because oh, kids man. are like, poor comedian dealing. And if you title it right, it goes good. It's like, Kid hecklers destroy comedian set and people are like I'm clicking. That on is that. awesome. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Look, it's after funny. you told me the story, I wanted to click yeah. on that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you when you try to break into a new area, like okay, so I, I need to get back to San Francisco. I got to get over to Billings, that kind of thing. But they don't know you there. I mean, you're a headliner, but yeah. not there necessarily. Yeah, exactly. How does that work? You look for a familiar face, a comedian you might have just killed with or worked the road with. Hey, Sammy, I see you're working at the punchline in San Fran. Who do you talk to over there? You know, he, he might say, Ooh, it's, it's really tight there. They're not booking new people, but I do have a show next May. Do you want to come do five minutes? No pay. Sorry. And you're like, yeah, I'll do it. And you're just hoping. And then when you get there, almost always it's like, Oh, the booker didn't show up tonight, but we'll let them know if you do okay. And yeah. that doesn't, it, they have to see to believe. And yeah. so you're hoping. And I've had the booker there and then, the, Oh, sorry. I, took a phone call while you were on stage. I'm like, I just flew to San Francisco, performed for free for five minutes, hoping. But you just keep shooting that bought basket. Bought these two drinks. Yeah, yeah bought these drinks. <laughs> yeah. Got these chicken wings. Ate this shitty burrito you guys gave me. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, but you just keep throwing the dart at the board. And yeah. You can't be hold it too precious. Like, I need this comedy club. This is the just one. Keep whack. Whack. Right. And my favorite thing to do when I go out of town on vacation is drop in on comedy clubs. And if I drop in, I go, by the way, in case you need me. This dude takes his work on vacation. Yeah. yeah. There's no more vacation. Because comedy is life. It's sure. like, yeah. it's like a way of life, you know. It's, you got a great life, man. It's Let a fun just life. Inject that you have a great life. So if you're on vacation, it's like, that just means you went somewhere. Yeah. And what's good about being a comedian, not a musician, is I don't need my band, my setup, my right. this, my notes. I just need, hey, can I get on that mic for a minute? And yeah. As long as they trust me. Right. You get on and just show your magic for short, sweet set. And that's why young comics are like, I'm not doing your... Th-. I invited people to come do my shows. Hey, you want to do come four minutes, five minutes on my show at the you know, Irvine Improv? Nah, man, I'm not driving down there for that. I'm like, well, then you're not like me. Yeah. Because yeah. I'll go do three minutes. My last comic standing audition was 90 seconds. So if you can't be funny in three minutes, how are you going to land last comic standing? Right. Yeah. So. yeah. That's the uh, that's the McBetancourt story mm-hmm. where he was hustling out in Chicago, hustling, hustling, and he's setting up these shows. And they, they shut, he was going to get on, you know, like with this whole host of, of comedians and, uh, they shut him out and he's like, no, no, yeah. you're going to give me. And he went up basically just told like one joke. Okay. But yeah. murdered, 
murdered cards with that one out joke. Bookers, and how do we, you know, yeah, how do we agents and stuff started reaching up with their cards. Right. Wow. I need to go to Chicago. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, but it's the same kind of story of perseverance. Yeah. Like you got to take what you can get. Yeah. And yeah. then once you get, you got to take a little more. And just hustle. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's what it comes down to. You don't know to. who's in that crowd watching that night. And also, someone told me every time you touch the mic and just say hello to the crowd, even if you hang it back up, it's like you've removed one brick from the wall between you and a crowd. And yeah. pretty soon, it's just a clear path of communication for the two. Now you can really lo- – like sure. I see Chappelle perform. He looks like he's in his living room and you walked in on him. He's yeah. like smoking a cigarette and he's got food up there sometimes and it's like, yeah. but he's killing. And everybody yes. feels lucky that, Hey man, I got to sit in Le Chappelle's yes. living room. And yeah. he, what I he was what, eating nachos. Here's when you know you're good. When you kill and turn it off and let the audience linger for three minutes and uh-huh. then turn it on and kill and link. Cause you know, I'm at the point, if I got him, I want to keep him and yeah. show him that I'm funny. But he hasn't, that need is gone. He's just, yeah. he's just casually gonna kill and then let off the, let off the gas and turn it up whenever he, he's got full control of the crowd. Yeah. That's cool. That's the master. Level eat some wings. There. Eat some, stand on stage and eat some wings. Yeah. And then, you know, the laughter dissipate. This is what I'm imagining in my head as you describe this. He turns the mic off, puts the mic back on the stand. He starts eating a chicken wing. The laughter from him killing. Yeah. Slowly dissipates. <laughs> and then a couple people. <laughs> <laughs> from him eating a chicken wing. Yeah. And then the and then the swell grows again. Yeah. And he's working that by yeah. eating a chicken wing. <laughs> he could. Yeah. He definitely could. Like he'll light up a cigarette and just talk. Damon Wayne's can do it. Yeah. That guy's so funny. You know, I watched a uh, documentary with, about knuckleballers and Charlie Huff is I talking. I saw that. You see that it's a, when Charlie Huff is talking to R.A. Dickey, you know, he's like, all right, he's like, I've got this power knuckleball and I just got to throw it. And he's like, yeah, that's great. And the first time through the lineup, but each time through, you need to go slower and slower. And he's like, I know my best one's over there. But he's like, but you can get guys out at 52 miles an hour, too. Yeah. And he's like, I know I got to do it. But that's really the master. It's like, yeah, I'll get you out with my great stuff. But I'm also going to kill you with this stuff over here. Yeah. You know? And I'm so good that I don't need the same joke. I've got all. I can sit here and eat this chicken wing. Yeah, Yeah. I'm just gonna look at you like uh, Sean Peabody. Right, he's a a comedian. He works like uh, Idaho and Reno and that whole like circuit over there. He's hilarious. He's a headliner, and a lot of his jokes are eyebrows, Mm. an eye look. Oh man, yeah. And that's the good for camera because in a big crowd, the people in the back row might not see that eyebrow move. But the camera is right up your nostrils, yeah. and well, that's the, where you master. Big big comedy doesn't work as well on TV. You don't see a lot right. of jumping around, and yeah, you know that you see just like monologue guys who might not kill in a real comedy club, but they're killing it on TV. Well, I think that he probably went through something similar uh, to your experience with editing, mm. where he discovered that there are subtleties that he can project yeah. that really work for him. Yeah. And I think that, again, we go back to the 10 years. You don't do the 10 years, mm-hmm. you don't find those things out. He can't be, because he'll be silent for 30 seconds straight mm-hmm. and just wow. do that. And, and you're just you're rolling, you know. That's, That's a great uh, joke for a podcast. Then right. you don't have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just did that, everybody. He just did this thing. Yeah. But no, but then you don't have to write as many jokes, too. Yeah. So pacing is great. Slow down. Slow down, Kayvon. Slow down. You can kick your worst joke out. If you use your face to tell a joke, you yeah, know, like this joke here, out. I'm not going to use it. Yep, that's amazing. The, um, you walk around quite a bit, at least at the uh, Dirty at 1230 show. Is that by design? Oh, just like walking. Yeah, you moved around quite a bit. Just I mean, some of it's pantomiming, but other times you're moving around. Well, I'm. Um, <clears throat> certain jokes call for they get a little extra if you if you use your body into it. You know, the best best joke writers don't even have to move; they'll just stand there and hold it. But it's like fun. It's Mitch midnight. Hedberg. Yeah, he would just stand still. Yeah, but uh, but he had a look too. So you brought you he sucked you into his world, and he's like, I'm ignoring you, so right. you got to pay attention to me. Um, but I do. I like the Chris Rock thing where he's like marching back and forth, going something you got to know, you know. Yes. And, and so, and you were in that 12:30 at night setting in yeah. a Vegas. It, it was a bigger setting for you to. It's big. It was like maybe. 350, yeah, 400, 400 it's, it's, it's people there. I like to just move around a little bit. Plus, I, I'm an app energetic guy. I like to just kind of, you know, I do a joke. Sometimes when I first started, I was like, I want to write a joke that requires me to lay on the stool. Then I want to write a joke that requires me to jump really high. Like, I was trying to write jokes around physical stuff, but 
it's better to do the other way around where you're like, this joke would be a lot funnier if I show this. Action. I dig the exploration, though. It's cool to be able to go, okay, look, man, there's a microphone on a stand up there. Yep. There's a stool. I might have a glass of water. Mm-hmm. What can I do with this? Yep. Where can I take eyeballs? Where can I take people's imaginations? Right. And if you're going at it with, I think I'm going to try to lie down on the stool and see yeah. how that goes. Yeah, because I did a joke about, I was like, you know what? I have gone skydiving, indoor skydiving. Uh-huh. So I so go. You did an indoor skydiving bit on yeah. your chest on the stool. Yeah. Yeah, so I go, guys, I don't know if you've ever been skydiving, but there's a whole tutorial. Here's what they tell you to do. Lay down, put your legs up and your arms up, and act natural. This is not natural <laughs> for anyone. Yes. And if you slide his movement on your hand and you're sliding into the glass like a hockey player, pow, pow, pow. And I go, at least outdoor skydiving, you have a little, you know, space. You to got kinda, some room. Yeah, yeah, you can figure it out. And indoor, you just look like an idiot just getting beat up. And uh, the joke was, it was kind of funny, but I just was like, oh, I'm using the stool for this one, you know. There's a lot of subtlety in your comedy, though, where you're doing things. Okay, go and spread eagle on the on the stool that's one thing but you know the physical stuff that you do is subtle and it's not subtle because you're doing just a facial move or whatever but it's subtle because you want to bring us into the small things that you notice yeah you know and they're all there and i think that's one of the things that we like about you is that your your observations are the little things i try to do that part of doing 10 years you know something's going to be funny and this is not really a joke, but it's it hits so hard. I was on an airplane that was delayed. And so I text my friend, I think I'm going to be late. And out of nowhere, the flight attendant was like, sir, that needs to be in airplane mode. I go, no, the plane needs to be in airplane yes. mode. That's why we're sitting on the tarmac right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I, as soon as I, we had that little thing. That and, I, I, uh, that and being Iranian lands you on the no-fly yeah, list. Yeah, and that's why I'm on the no-fly <laughs> list. <laughs> but then I go, oh, and I first brought that joke from that. That happened on the plane. I got um, on stage that night, tried it, and it was a big applause break because a lot of people have been through that feeling yes, where sure. you're getting yelled at for something that doesn't really matter according yeah, to... Yeah, fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so, they're on you about it. But meanwhile, the plane doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The plane was down for delay. So I was like, yeah. So I would never have known that's a joke when I first started. Yeah. But now it's just I'm honed in on that. I got one. Like it's catching fish. Got one. And it's got a five-pounder or whatever. Yeah, so, right. You feel Back, the slight when tug. When you first start, you got, you're writing lots of material, sure. but you're like pulling out a boot and a freaking, <laughs> yeah. a spare tire. A radiator. And, yeah, yeah. Right and then you got a fish. You start yeah. noticing what that tug feels like. You're like, okay, this will work tonight. Yeah. I kind of got mixed feelings about this news gig for you because I feel like if, if it takes off, you know, it's going to be great for you yes. financially. Oh, yeah. Exposure wise. We're going to see a little less comedy from you. Less stand up. Um, Thing is, I'll get paid way more to do less. Yes. So, like, I'll take a Saturday Sunday gig on the East Coast, yeah. or because um, a lot of the big big headliners they don't do a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's how I started headlining on the road. Is mm-hmm. I would say, oh, I see you have Bill Bellamy or uh, Bob Saget coming on Friday, Saturday. Do you have a Wednesday, Thursday guy yet? No, we don't. Boom! I'll take those days. So they need you to come in there. And you come baby headliner. I mean, do you stay and do a feature? Then? If they'll let you. If but a lot of these guys already have their own feature. Maybe uh-huh. a guy they came up with. Right. And but if they don't, I'd love to you know work with them. And I've been able to work on the road with Tommy Davidson, who is mm-hmm. like a guy I idolized. That dude's hilarious. Hilarious guy Tommy from Davidson Saturday Night so Live. Fucking funny. If you remember him from Saturday Night Live, it was always. A beautiful masseuse was going to give him a massage. It was going to be great. <laughs> and right when he put his head in the little towel, oh, she had to step out. But don't worry, Wanda, with his Jamie Foxx, she's going to come and rock your world. <laughs> and she, and he's, he's feeling his hands. He's like, oh, that feels good. Ah, ah! And he get off the table and start swinging at this big woman with a wig. Like, Why yes. you get all mad? You know my hands feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I big time Tommy Davidson one time. You did, he, uh, yeah. He, I didn't mean to. He was in Vegas, and I worked for also apart from being Cat Morgan, I worked for the golf magazine in town. Mm. And so he was hosting one of our events, and then I went up to the foundation room, and uh, I was just going to go thank him. Uh-huh. You know, and he's busy, and he's being Tommy Davidson. And he's already worked and everything. So I just wanted to say, 
hey, man, thanks. I appreciate you coming out. Mm -hmm. So I I go, hey, man, thanks. I really appreciate you coming out. And I turned to walk away. And as I was doing that, he's throwing his hand out to shake my hand. And I was, and I saw it, but it was too late because I had already spun on him. Oh, I I just big time talking to him. So Tommy, I'm sorry. I, uh, yes, he does follow everything I do. So he will hear this. (laughs) Man, that's messed up. (laughs) I have to now be associated with the dude who big time Tommy Davis. Yeah. I also big time Eric Dickerson in Vegas one time too. Oh, really? Same kind of thing. Yeah. Cause, we were all comparing notes, my buddies and I, who were in town, and uh, they'd come in. Jesus, what is to... next? The revelations from Pete today. Did you flip off Muhammad Ali at some point in your life? Yeah. <laughs> what else did you do? Yeah. What about your career has you most excited right now? I mean, I know the news gig is great. We do hope it takes off. Mm-hmm. We hope it takes off so that you will get the great cushy weekend yes. headlining gigs. At the but, A rooms all around. Right. <clears throat> but you're hitting a stride now that you've gotten the 10 years under your belt. Yeah. What What's most exciting to you right now? What are you looking forward to? Well, I feel like everyone who wanted to ever be a stand-up comedian and that gave it a shot, out of all those people, only maybe 5% able to make a living doing it. So I'm already, I feel like, at the top 95%. And now I'm just looking at... That's true. I'm just looking at the few little percentages above going, well, I want to try to reach those points. So I'm lucky the in that. The difference between the 95 percentile and the 96th percentile it's a and lot. the 97th yeah, percentile. It goes, it goes yeah, way it's a nice. I mean, don't get me wrong. This fucking swanky Hollywood apartment is cool. <laughs> Very yeah. swanky. But it fits yeah. three men in my bedroom quite comfortably. You know what happened? <laughs> That's... <laughs> Good Lord. That didn't need to be said, but now that it's been said. And is there not room for at least three more? <laughs> That's oh, true. There's always room for three more. This is West Hollywood. <laughs> But the difference becomes now your swanky Hollywood apartment has fewer roommates. Yes. Yeah. More windows. Yeah. <laughs> more, we- more windows. Higher up in the air. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, really, that's really what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to move from where I live right now five blocks sure. up. I'm trying to look at my comedy and go 5% higher. And um, the gigs are there. I'm just very lucky I can do stand-up. I get college gigs still because they think I'm a college-age guy. Yeah. So I do about 30 colleges, maybe 40 a year. Oh, colleges are good, huh? Yeah. yeah, I pay well. But I'm also, I've been doing stand-up long enough, I can get on a cruise ship. I get about 10 cruise ships a year where I'm making the decent money, but I'm, uh, you know, these are all older people. Most comics like, I don't want to deal with that. Well, we're going to get that age soon. Yeah. Now, do you want to know how to entertain the crowd that's a little more conservative? Or do you just want to say your F words every night? Sure. And then when it's time for you to be 50, now you don't have an act. So I'm building my act on both sides. And that is some tremendous foresight. That's, yeah. That's yeah. a lot of game right that's there. That's my 401k. Yeah. So like. Well, if you're able to trans, cause if you can do that, you can do other audiences. Like we know a, yes. a comedian who's a white comedian. He's like, I work black rooms. Mm-hmm. Cause I know I can get a gig in a, in a white room. Yeah. But I can also work these. And now I'm the white guy in a black room. You're I'm already just, funny just by being there. You know, yeah, everything's right. off, you know. Well, I've done a church gig. And sure. I landed a college gig, Catholic college, very strict. They go, can we, before we hire you and pay you, you know, three grand, can you do 40 minutes clean? And I just like, I'm just going to take the cruise ship act. Slide it in with a few, yeah. way to go, church school, go yeah. Notre Dame or wherever it was. And uh, you throw a couple of those in there and they're like, that was great. You didn't go into the gutter, you know, and all that stuff. And so you're like, cool, cool. I'm building up the arsenal of jokes. You just got to pick which weapon. Sometimes you make a mistake because you're in the, f- you're like, I've been doing nothing but, you know, rated R comedy shows and now I'm in a church. Gig. Yeah. You got to like recalibrate your brain a little bit. They're like turn into corporate cave on, not uh, corporate scumbag. Cave-on. Yes. Yeah. So that's cool, man. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, we have, uh, the tremendous honor of having you at this point in your career because it's going to take off. We know. We already know. The celeb barely is going to go. That's right. That's right. And <laughs> when you do, we're going to be bit, like, dude, a little bit. <laughs> we had, we got, we had Cave on on our show the first time right. when, uh, he had plastic furniture. In yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's just one of those things where we can go, this is great to have captured. So we appreciate it, man. We thank you for bringing us into your swanky pad. I, I think we should establish this now. Whenever we have you back on the show, yeah. it ought to be in one of our bedrooms. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's just set the tone. Just bedroom <laughs> chat. Yeah. And whatever picture you use for this cover should have some sort of bedroom theme to it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. It would be one of those things like that you Fabio. just you see it, and then when you mouse over, yeah, you know, like, the, the opening to let's get oh, it on. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How come whenever I mouse over K-1's face, I hear boys to men? <laughs> yeah. 
I'll make love to you. <laughs> Woo, like you want me to. I love it. Yeah. That's hilarious. So yeah, that's man. Great. Thank you so much for having us. Let's talk real quick please. about how everybody gets in touch with you. If you Google KVON comedian, I'm the only KVON comedian in the world. Seriously. The only one. Yes. KVON comedian. Until now. <laughs> and if you message me, I usually have a couple free tickets to my shows because at this point in my career, I can give away free tickets. But when other people start counting them, they want to know who yeah, gets look, a Yeah, look, before cut. they're 200 bucks, before yeah. you got to throw down 200 bucks to see Cave on in Madison Square Garden. Yeah, when you got to throw down $100 to see a comedy show, that means agents are involved. Yeah. There's uh, managers, publicists. Other people want some money, too. So you can't just give away four tickets yeah. because you you have to buy four tickets. Yes. and. So, yeah, get your free tickets now, please, while you can. Kayvon is funny. I've seen him live. <laughs> I got right up. You can right see him over. on YouTube, too. So Man. check him out oh, on yeah. YouTube. Oh, yeah. I do a new sketch every single week, including my one called That Was How We Did It. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's all about the 90s. <laughs> it is. This is not how we do it anymore. You know, that was how we did it. It's all about <laughs> Blockbuster Video, Circuit City, yeah. Tamaguchi Pets, yes. and Slap Bracelets with Yearbooks. Yeah, <laughs> bracelets. Seriously, and, uh, do you ever play out. music on the way out of yeah. the? Yeah. That was how we did it. Thank you, man. Yes. Yeah, man. Thanks. That's fantastic. That was how we did it.